Welcome back, my name is Kevin Reyes. Today, we are looking at my workhorse lenses, the DZO Pictor Zooms, and this is the study of glass. So we're gonna talk about the three Pictor zooms that DZO Film now has available, the 20 to 55, the 50 to 125, and the most recent release, the 14 to 30. We'll highlight some of the physical aspects that I like about these lenses. We'll look at some of the imagery from each of these lenses, what applications I use each lens for. Uh, we'll then take a look at just the value. Are they right for you? Are they something that you should add to your kit? Let's get right into it with some of the physical aspects of these lenses. I bought the kit that came with two lenses, the 20 to 55 and the 50 to 125. And the first thing I noticed was the case that it came in. It comes in a very nice hard shell Pelican style case uh, with the branding on it. it. Even has a little metal badge on it. And right off the bat, I already know that these lenses are production ready. These can be either rented out or they could be kind of thrown in a truck or they could be on professional sets. And I can kind of rest assured that these lenses are gonna be protected. But it just starts there because when you open up the case it comes with every little thing you might need for any production um, comes with EF mounts PL mounts easily switchable it comes with shims for back focus on any camera it comes with lens support brackets it comes with little screws for each of the mounts it even comes with little tools for changing those mounts there's custom little printed labels um, all over the inside of this case which you know those kinds of things make me really appreciate just the the detail that goes into manufacturing these lenses and then using them as well and so DZO really thought about every filmmaker every content creator anyone using these lenses when you're buying this as a package you're getting the full package so when we pull these lenses out and look at the physical aspects of them you can obviously tell just by holding them that they're cinema lenses and you can easily tell that by the weight of them they're a lot heavier than stills lenses i kind of like adding the weight to my rig in order to kind of get rid of those handheld jitters that you get from lighter cameras they also have the focus iris and zoom rings uh, with the gear pitches on them so you can easily use them with fizz motors or, or wireless focus motors another thing i love about these lenses is it has the little zoom stick that comes Comes out you can kind of screw this little thumb zoom stick in any part of the lens where you want to kind of grab the zoom it reminds me of um, some of those old film cameras in fact I got one back here let me, let me show you yeah this thing these little zoom sticks that screw into the side of the lens it just gives you a tangible feeling of your zoom I love doing a lot of in-camera zooms kind of to mimic these super 8 and super 16 style old-school film cameras and when you have a little zoom stick um, they're underrated. I use mine on my DZO lenses so much, but it just allows you to pull zoom near and far very smoothly. Each lens is parfocal, and if you don't already know what parfocal means, it basically just means the focus point stays the exact same whether you zoom all the way in or zoom all the way out. Again, I like to do a lot of those in-camera zooms and being able to pull focus, make sure it's sharp, and being able to zoom through that range and maintain that focus point is clutch for me, and it makes all my in-camera zooms better. They are all T2.8. Each lens has the same 95 millimeter outer diameter. They all have the same focus, zoom, and iris gear position. They've got focus markings, zoom markings. Now I love the interchangeable lens mounts. That's something for me that is, again, so clutch because I use these on Alexa cameras, I use them on RED cameras, I use them on EF cameras. And being able to switch these lenses from EF to PL and back and not being a lens tech and me being able to do that super quick is super clutch. But not only that, I also rent these lenses out to other filmmakers and being able to cater to any lens mount just increases the rental value on these lenses. Now when you look at these lenses for their mechanics, their physical aspects alone, they are right up there with some of the higher end cinema zooms. But now let's look at image quality. Now you've probably seen a lot of YouTube reviews and, and lens tests on these lenses in particular, and they all are pretty spot on in terms of where they place them, right in the middle between the modern kind of clinical look and you know vintage kind of characteristic. They're, they're right in between. They have a lot of the vintage aspects to them. You know, they have a lot of flaring. Um, there's some distortion. 
There is some softness around the edges. Boca tends to hug the frame around the edges. Um, and so in that regard, I love them because if you know me, I love vintage glass. In fact, if you haven't already seen it, I'll post right above my vintage Leica R review, which, you know, I, I love vintage glass. I love the organic feel that they give, but it can also be a sharp lens. We'll start from the longer end, 50 to 125, and we'll make our way down to the, the wider 14 to 30. Now I've used this 50 to 125 on a lot of product shoots and it's sharp enough to pull off some of these product shots. So anytime I want to pull the subject out of the background, it's really nice. This lens reminds me a lot of the Canon L70 to 200, but you know, it has not only the mechanics of a cinema lens, but it also gives you um, kind of a vintage feel. It, it kind of dirties up the image a little bit while still maintaining that sharpness. Beautiful lens. I use this lens all the time. This won't be a scar. Now moving over to the 20 to 55, this lens I use so much. With the 20 to 55 range, it could be used for almost any kind of shoot you're looking for. You've got your, your wides at 20 and you can really separate stuff um, at 55. And so this lens, you know, obviously is used the majority of the time. All these lenses have these kind of greenish flare, which I dig, I like the green flare. Now on the wider end, this does have a little bit of distortion. They do have a little bit of chromatic aberration. I think that's probably one of the downsides. Once you learn and you know teach your eye to see chromatic aberration, then it starts to bother you, you can't unsee it. But before I even knew what that meant, the average viewer or even most of your clients I mean, most of my clients don't even know what chromatic aberration is or to look for it or that it's even bad. So I'm not tripping too hard over the, over the amount of chromatic aberration it has. Now the last lens is the 14 to 30. Now this is the last lens. Uh, that DZO released to round out and complete the trifecta of the Pictor zooms. And I am so glad that they released this because I have recently been getting into wide angle lenses and I love them. Um, those super wide angle lenses, a lot of people have used the uh, Tokina 11 to 20. I think that's a good comparable cinema lens. That range is so fun. Even at the 14 millimeter end, there is a fair amount of distortion, which you find on those older vintage lenses. There's definitely, you know, bowing around the edges is um, some people dig that. I mean, I myself dig that. A lot of anamorphic lenses feature, you know, those those distorted edges. I shoot a lot of fashion with this, and I love the way it kind of stretches the model's legs and kind of makes them look bigger than life, uh, which is a very popular fashion look. They work really well, especially if you have a really nice location. This really cool wide-angle lens, which I've really been loving recently. Now, one thing that I was a little bummed out about when I received this lens was when I opened up the box, I was hoping that it would be kind of smaller. I use smaller gimbals like the DJI Ronin S2, and I wanna be able to throw my Komodo on there and a small zoom lens. I shoot the Komodo with Leica R's on the gimbal because it's such a nice compact package, um, but there's no way I can get this 14 to 30 to balance properly with my Komodo on there. Um, you, I would have to jump up to the Movi Pro or the, the Ronin 2, and I just don't want to use those bigger, heavier gimbals when I'm kind of doing my run and gun stuff, so I was hoping it would be kind of the size of something like the you know Tokina 11 to 20. But it's a very similar size to the other two lenses. That's, I would consider subjectively a downside for me, but you know, I get it, I get it. The other thing that I noticed interestingly enough was a lot of my images from the 14 to 30 were a lot warmer than the other two lenses, probably 800 to 1000 Kelvin warmer. And it was also a hair darker than the rest of the lenses as well. So that's definitely not good, um, especially when you're calling them cinema lenses and if they're all part of the same, you know, the Pictor zooms, they're all part of the same collection, then they should match. And that's a big reason why people get the, these lenses is they need them to match whether they're doing interviews or multicam shoots. If I send footage to a client, um, that looks bad on me when one camera looks a lot warmer than the other one. That kind of 
um, points at me and says, I don't know how to you know, balance these colors. Of course you could fix it really quickly in post, but that's not what I wanna do. I want these lenses to match perfectly. Now I reached out to DZO and they did say they are going to fix it. Now I don't know if that means the next batch or you know, the, the newest batches have a new coating or if they're gonna come out with a whole new you know, lens or generate, I have no idea. Um, all I know is that they said they were gonna fix it and so hopefully that is the case, but if you do have the 14 to 30, um, I would check it against the other DZOs, especially if you own the whole collection. Now, who are these lenses for? I think it's probably easier to answer who they are not for because them being zoom lenses, uh, they cover so much. They're so versatile. Um, a lot of filmmakers can use them, whether you're doing interviews, corporate, you're doing fashion, you're doing multicam stuff, um, you know, whatever you're doing, these lenses can cover them. So I'd probably say they're not for someone who wants to maintain a really light package, who wants to be super light on their feet, you know, run and gun, you know, event, wedding stuff, where you kind of need maybe image stabilization, you need a lighter kit because you're holding it all day, it's only you, you don't have a first AC, you don't even have an assistant to help you. Um, I would probably stick with the, you know, Canon L stuff or even the Sigma stuff because it's just lighter. Um, you can screw on ND filters. The DZOs, they do have threads in them, but it's a lot bigger and it's, those, those filters are a little bit more cumbersome and more expensive to come by. So you kind of, you have to use a four by five filters in a matte box and that takes rails and now you have a whole rig and it's a little heavier. And so I would say if, if you're kind of going for the lightest, you know, camera rig, you're going for the, the fastest run and gun, the event filmmakers, the, the wedding filmmakers, um, the hybrid shooters, the people who need autofocus. Those are, those are the types of shooters who I don't think would benefit much from these. With what I do, they are, they are amazing. It's almost like you have every single prime in every single focal range from 14 to 125. They are really that good. I love the attention to detail that DZO has given us. I love the value they're packing into this package um, to make it more accessible for filmmakers who might not make uh, millions of dollars, but might not have $50,000 budgets or $100,000 budgets to rent the highest end glass. And so um, kudos, mad respect to DZO Film for making lenses that are great value for an affordable price. Really appreciate that. Really appreciate you guys. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Um, if you ever want to rent these lenses, I'm in Southern California and you can look at my share grid. Um, you can come by and check them out if you want here at the studio. By the way, we have a new studio that is available for rent. It's a massive studio. I'll have another video on that soon. Um, it's on, it's in West Side Costa Mesa. Um, and so, um, yeah, I think that's it. God is real. Um, that's it. Love you guys. Peace.